Is this a complete surprise? Well, I mean, if you, to hear her say it, you know, the minute someone steps into the CEO office, they already start planning succession. So they're really putting an emphasis that this is an orderly succession. She's been in this job for 12 years. It's a long time. So it's uh, kind of a surprise, but I think that internally and in the community, people have kind of seen this coming. Yes. And Jackie, it's interesting because um, another veteran is being appointed to take over um, in the form of her lieutenant. And it seems like even though Pepsi has weathered some challenges that are um, sort of industry wide, it's interesting that they're, they seem to be staying the course with this appointment. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, you know, it's worth noting that, you know, they've shifted, you know, a lot of their performances coming out of the snacks, uh, particularly salty snacks. Food is about 53% of their revenues. Soda has been a little bit more challenging, as you know, because of the consumer shifts and, you know, sugar and all of the issues around diets and changing consumer habits. So, yeah, I mean, he's coming in at an interesting time, particularly for North America and especially for the drinks part of their business. So, so she was a very accomplished CEO. She weathered a lot of storms. She, it was not a knockout performance compared even to Coca-Cola. At the same time, she was also a pathbreaker. She was the first woman to be the CEO of PepsiCo. She was the first woman of color to be a CEO. And she spoke, actually, to Bloomberg recently about that experience. I came into the workforce when there were hardly any women in senior executive positions. So now we have numbers, but 20, 30 years ago when I first started working, there weren't too many women. So I'd say that I, you know, was, uh, it was difficult being a woman and being in the workforce. I think being an Indian immigrant got me attention because I was often the only colored person in the room. And so that got me attention, but I had to work harder to prove that the color and the gender actually uh, should not be counted against me. I could do a damn good job too. So that was from a Bloomberg Forum last September in 2017. Uh, Jackie, she says that there are more women in the workforce. True enough, not that many more women in the C-suite. That is correct. And I mean, her departure, uh, her replacement by ML Insider, um, orderly or not, it raises a lot of questions about the numbers, the dearth of women um, at the CEO level. We saw this with Denise Morrison, um, who stepped down from Campbell, um, you know, the Mondelez CEO, uh, Irene Rosenfeld. So there has been sort of a steady drip drip. Uh, the numbers aren't as great as I think people would expect them to be. And Jackie, um, as we talked about earlier, Nuyi says she's now going to devote some time to promoting women, to trying to encourage them to seek leadership positions. Um, at this point, is there any kind of organized effort on that front, particularly by the women you just talked about who have stepped down? Yeah, I mean, she says she's very open to, you know, hearing ideas, but that one of her, as she's trying to figure out what her next steps are, you know, one of the things she's very committed to is to continue to be a role model, a mentor, an advocate for, you know, female leadership um, in, in corporate America and across the world. So it's not quite sure what it looks like um, in practice, but she says that's something that she wants to continue to work on and she's open to ideas. Jackie, finally and briefly, what's the biggest thing on the to-do list for Mr. LaGuardia? Turnaround drinks. Um, how did the challenge of, you know, carbonated soda, sugar drinks, bring back growth on that side of the business.